You have successfully completed the installation of the Juice Charger Mi 3 and would now like to configure the station. We show you how to do it in this video. To do this, go to dashboard.juice.world on your computer and log in. Of course, you can also configure everything via the app in exactly the same way. The functionalities and setting options are the same as here in the browser. When you are logged in, you will see a list of all your groups and the associated charging stations. We will show you how to create these later. For example, we are now going to our stations that we have installed here at our headquarters. I now have an overview of the installation at our head office with all the stations. I can see directly which are online, which are charging, which are occupied, and of course, which are offline. Now I select the station I want to configure by clicking on it and I immediately get an overview of the station. At the top, I see the name of the station directly below the serial number. On the left hand side, I can see the current status of the station. As we have already seen, this can be available, charging, occupied, or offline. In the field below, I can select stored RFID cards or badges and use them to unlock the station with the play button at the bottom here. Charging will then begin when a vehicle is attached. If the station has an integrated meter, I can see the kilowatt hours charged right here at the top of the window. In the field below, I can change the charging power of the station in quick access. Here on the right is an overview of the voltage and current applied to the different phases. And below that, I have an overview of the cost of the kilowatt hours charged if I have set the tariffs. Further down, we have a ribbon with all possible settings and exporting options. We'll get to that in a moment. On the right, I have a status with various information and the option to reboot the station. Should there ever be a problem? Here on the left-hand side, you can give the station a name. As already mentioned, this is our car park number 26 and the customer's name. Here, it's our company and the group in which the station should appear. I then have the option of making a subgroup if the whole thing is a more complex construct and adding a comment, which is then also displayed in the station overview. As everywhere in the dashboard, you will find a small info button directly next to the input field, which you can click on at any time, and you will be shown additional information on what exactly you can set in this field. Let's go further down. Here you have the option to enter the VET, select the currency, and enter the day and night tariff. If you're wondering why everything here is in English, it's simply because our account here is set to English. This can, of course, be changed via the settings wheel at the top right to the currently available languages. Now to the actual settings here in this ribbon. In the status section, you have all kinds of different statistics for this device. How many sessions, how much the average duration per charging process is, etc. I'll just scroll through here for a moment. You can also see which other charging stations are in this network, and you can delete the charging station at the bottom if you no longer want to have it onboarded. The next item, Charge History, shows you a diagram with the charging data for this station. On the right-hand side, we have the actual logs of who has charged how much and when. I can select the area at the top for which I want to see this data and it will be updated in no time at all. You can export the charging data using the export button at the top right. You will then see all the charging stations that are installed at this client, in our example here at our company. This station, which I am already at, is already pre-selected. However, I could now simply add further stations here and export them as well. A PDF is then generated and I can download it or print it out. In the next item, Network, I can make settings for the network. Depending on how the station is connected to the internet, these areas have already been filled in by the update tool to make it as easy as possible for you. In the next point, Backend, you can integrate a third-party backend in addition to the Juice dashboard. This is useful, for example, if you have a home energy management system and want it to be able to control your charging stations. You can find all this information in the backend of your third-party provider. It will tell you exactly what needs to be entered here so that the station can log in correctly. In the next item, Authorization, you can set whether and how the station should be activated. 
In the first item, I select whether I want to activate free charge. In the field below, enter the tag you want to appear in the charging history when charging on free charge. I can then decide here whether I want to set up a local whitelist. A whitelist is a list of RFID tags that are authorized to activate the station. We will show you how to set this up in the next chapter. Further down, I could also set up the ISO 15118 auto charge. However, you also need an additional backend from a third-party provider for this, and many car manufacturers unfortunately do not yet support this as specified in the standard. For this reason, this function is unfortunately not yet fully supported. In the next item, RFID cards, you can add more RFID cards than the two pre-configured ones you received with the station. You can do this by entering it manually here and then pressing plus, or by starting the learning mode at the station and then presenting the RFID card to the reader of the station. For people who want to upload a whole company, for example, as we did all the badges of the employees, there is the possibility of the mass upload here. Simply create a CSV file and upload it here. The next point, sync, is there so that you don't have to do this for each station individually, but you only have to upload the CSV file once and then synchronize the desired badges to the other stations. You can make all settings on how to manage load under the item load management. This includes both the local load management of the station itself and the load management like a dynamic load management in a network of several charging stations. Firstly, we look at the local settings. Normally, this value corresponds to the fuse that you have connected upstream of the station. However, you can also, for example, fuse the station with 32 amps and then limit it to 16 amps here. This means you can reduce or increase the power at any time using the software without having to install another fuse. If you have integrated the station in a backend of a third-party provider, you can limit the station here in case the connection to the backend is interrupted. To do this, select on in the drop-down menu and then enter the desired value here. Now to the actual load management. Here at Dynamic Load Management in this drop-down, you have four different options. Two of these relate to the master and two to the slave. Each load management system has a master and up to 250 slaves that listen to this master. For simple static load management, as in the illustration here, you can select the master with internal slave. Further fields for setting up the load management will open. Enter a number for the load management line here under network ID. The slaves will then also reference this. We'll just pick number one here. Usually you can leave all these other settings as they are. If you would like to change something and wanna know exactly what you can set here, you can click on the info button. In the next field here, we enter the maximum current available to this load management string. For example, we now have 200 amps in our car park, so I enter 200 everywhere here. Here you can set the maximum current in amperes available to the various stations. For example, you can set all stations to have 16 amps. However, if you have now fused the stations for 32, you can enter the value 32 everywhere here and then save it. If you want to set up load shedding and have connected the potential free contacts during installation, as shown in this illustration, you can set the external input to Opto1 here. This activates the load shedding for the entire load management string. Here you then select whether the contact is normally active or inactive. This depends on how the ripple control signal is configured. Your responsible energy supplier can tell you this, and then enter below how much the individual stations should be reduced when the ripple control signal is activated. For example, the energy supplier requires that the charging stations may only charge with 6 amps in the event of load shedding. In other words, I calculate 32 minus 6, which results in 26, and that's what I enter here. And if the energy supplier now sends the signal, all stations are reduced by 26 amps. In the next item, external meter, you can integrate an external electricity meter, which then dynamically regulates the load management. I'll show you how to do this briefly here, and more windows will open. Here I select which meter I want to use. We recommend using a TCP meter. 
Enter all the information for the calculation below. That means the total current available to the installation, including the additional load, such as the house. In our example, let's take 100 amps, of which we would like to reserve 20 as a safety margin for the house. To do this, I enter 20 amps everywhere on each phase. If I now have a special load on phase one, I can also increase the value here. For example, we also have lights, etc., on phase one. So I increase the value to 25 amps. In the next point, you can enter the number of amps by which the load management power should be reduced if the external meter cannot be reached. We recommend that you leave this value as it is, as the fuse will trip if the external meter cannot be reached and the charging stations would draw full power. In this point here, you choose whether the meter measures consumption including or excluding the charging stations, so if it is before or after the installation of the charging stations. You can leave the other settings usually as they are. With the minimum current limit, you set how many amps the charging process should start from. This value is set to 6 amps because practically all vehicle manufacturers only start charging from 6 amps on one phase. With disconnected limit, you set how much power should be available to this station if it no longer has a connection to dynamic load management. Now we come to the next setting up here, the master standalone. All functions are basically the same here. We recommend this version if you want to operate an additional home energy management system, as a single juice charge controller then takes over the entire control and calculations and can then send the signal to the other slaves. However, the settings below are the same as for the other master version. Then we have the slave with master auto discovery. Here you simply enter the network ID to which master the slave should belong. And the two limits, Firstly, the minimum current limit, when the station should start charging, and the disconnected limit, how much current is allocated to the station if the connection to the master is interrupted. Very important here. Make sure that the sum of your stations multiplied by the six amps does not overload the installation's fuse. The last version, the slave with master fix IP, is for absolute professionals who want to enter the IP address of the slave directly here. That's it for the load management. On to the next item, installation. This is where you set the amperage with which you have fused the station. If you have fused the station to 32 amps, you can manually change the value to 32 here. Then, as with every setting in this video, click on save and then on save and restart. Very important. Do this at the end when you have made all the settings, as it takes a short moment for all the configurations to be loaded and the station to restart. You can click on this arrow on the right-hand side of the field if you have entered something and want to return to the default value. In the point below, you select what kind of system it is, in Europe, usually a three-phase system. In the field below, you can set the connection sequence of the phases as you connected them to the station during installation. Phase rotation would be important if many single-phase vehicles were charging at the same time. As almost all manufacturers are launching three-phase vehicles on the European market, phase rotation is becoming increasingly less important. You can basically leave the other settings here as they are. If you want to find out more, you can click on the info button. In the next item, Settings History, you will see a complete list of all the changes that have been made here at this station. In case you've made a mistake or simply want to go back to an older version. Under User Management, you can see who has access to this station and in which role. You can also use this icon to invite other users with the email address, either as a user or as a guest. This is particularly important for the future owner. Don't forget, if you want to reset a value to the default, you can do this using the arrow to the right of the field. Finally, save your settings and restart the station. These were all the settings required to configure the Juice Charger Mi 3. For further settings and information, simply click on the info buttons. Once you have completed the configuration, you hand over the owner card and thus also the rights to the future owner. They will onboard the station in the app or dashboard and take over the station. You, as the installer, will then no longer have access without their consent. 
We hope you enjoyed this video and hope you have fun configuring it. You can find more videos on our channel.